Hey, what is going on YouTube? We are back with another video. The last video we left off on in our algorithms and data structures was unordered linear search. However, I realize that as we progress forward through more searches, they're going to be ordered. So I'm going to take a step back here and I'm going to cover sorting algorithms. That way we can take the sorting algorithms and integrate them into our searches. That way we can give our programs any kind of array, vector, or file in any order, and our program shall order that list for us, and then we can send it into, you know, binary search or something, and we should have no issues. So the first one I'm going to cover here is a pretty basic algorithm. It's actually probably not the best one to use. Uh, if you want to get up and going in a short amount of time, it is fairly short to write and quick to get going. Uh, it will grow ridiculously slow as, you know, data structures get larger and larger with more data. So this first one I'm gonna cover here is going to be bubble sort. If I can write it right. All right, so bubble sort, what it does is you give it an array, a vector, or anything, so we'll say integers, and it takes the smaller, it will go through iteratively in sequential order of the index zero through n, and it will basically bubble up the smallest element to the top, hence the name bubble sort. So I'm gonna go through a small example of how it works because this does get fairly long as it does the passes through the array. So I'm going to keep the, this data structure fairly, fairly small. So we're going to create an array that's going to hold four numbers here. Let's go with, uh, I'll help if I get a brush and set the color to black. Uh, five, four, eight, one, uh, just for simplicity's sake, we're going to keep the array unique, no duplicates. And again, like I said, this will grow, you know, in time. The longer this array is, because you will see here shortly, we have to do each pass through this array twice, because we have an outside loop, which is going to be set to zero, and then we're going to have an inside loop that can be set to, that's going to be j, which is going to be set to this i, plus 1, because there's absolutely zero sense to take whatever this i index is, for this case 0, and compare it to itself, because it's just, it's a waste of time. Uh, so we just skip right over it, we just say i plus 1. What we're going to do here is we're going to take i, and then we're going to say is i greater than j. So if that condition is true, we're going to say swap i the index j. So I know it's kind of vague right now. We'll cover the pseudocode in a bit after we run through the example here to show kind of show how it works and how the name bubble sort gets its name or how the algorithm bubble sort gets its name. So we have these two, does is i greater than j, so is five greater than four, the condition is true, so we swap the two, we say four, five, eight, one. i is still zero because we're still in the out, we're still in the inner loop, so then we increment j here, which is now equal to two. Is four greater than eight? No, it's not, so we don't swap it. Do another pass through, we say j is equal to three now. Is four greater than one? Yes, it is. So now we say one, five, eight, four, because now we swap the two. Now we're at, we're at the end of the array in j, so now we go back out to i. Now we increment i is equal, increment it once, so now i is equal to one. Now we have an array of one, five, eight, four, and then we set j 
to i plus 1, so now it's 2. Is 5 greater than 8? No, it's not. So then now we do another pass through. 5 greater than 4? Yes, it is. 5, 4, 8, 5. That's another pass through. Now we increment i again because we're at the end of the array. So now i equal to 2. Then we got 1, 4, 8, 5. So we just set j is equal to 3 because 2 plus 1 is 3. So it's 8 greater than 5. Yes, it is. So 4, 5, 8. Then we're at the end. So then we increment i again equals 3 and 1 4 5 8 and j is can't go anymore so we are done uh, for this case it took you know three passes if you don't count three um, if you do count three it's four passes so you can see as the more numbers you add to this uh, the longer it will take because now you gotta you know go through this twice for the outer loop and the inner loop since both i and j run to the length of the array so next we're going to jump into the pseudocode to put a little code to what we just explained here hopefully it makes a little more sense that being said, hopefully this will clear it up. If you have any doubts of, you know, this I is greater than J, swap it. Like, how do we swap it? So I'm going to come down here in the space below. We have two loops, so we say four. I is equal to zero. I is less than, I'm going to name this array A, so A dot length. And we increment i, and then we're going to come inside here. We're going to say j is equal to i plus 1. Still j runs up to a dot length. And we just increment j. Now inside this inner loop here, we put an if statement. If a i is greater than a j this is where we do the swap so we need a temp var variable so now temp is going to be equal to a i and we set a i equal to a j and then now we're going to set a j equal temp and there you just did the swap the swapping and that's all that is to bubble sort super quick algorithm to get up and running like i said not your best algorithm um your performance will definitely hinder on this so you want to use something like in search and sort but for something like this you know an example like this if you got a small set of numbers works fine um, you need to sort something super quick you know this takes a couple line of code lines of code and you're done and you can you know do what you need to do with the numbers so hopefully you enjoyed the video sorry about my sloppy handwriting um, hopefully i made a little bit of sense and then hopefully the code kind of cleared it up a little bit So if you're interested in doing this algorithm in multiple languages such as C++, Java, Python, Node, uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button because that will soon follow this video as we build the data structure, I mean not the data structure, the algorithm, different languages. So if you do subscribe or hit the like button, I do greatly appreciate you. Greatly appreciate you watching the video. Hopefully you found some use in this. You've 
had any questions or anything, hopefully this cleared us up. And as always, thank you for tuning in. See ya.